This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. This is Bazzy's Backdoor Cinema, episode number 10. I am one of your hosts, Duncan McLeish. Joining me, as always, um, the show is named after him. He is uh, he is an integral part. If he's not here, it's not a Backdoor Cinema. Uh, he's the man that introduced me to Backdoor Cinema. And trust me, once you go back door, you'll never go back through the front. It's just that's just the way it is. Uh, you just know our buddy Patrick right now is smiling from ear to ear. Um, let me introduce my co-host for this episode, in which we are talking about Scream Six. I know you're all very excited. I've seen the Facebook. It is the man, the myth, the legend, the Baz. Good and Ahmed, my sexy camarade. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Listen, there's only one place that Patrick's smiling, and that's in his effing pants. <laughs> let me tell you. A saucy monkey. <laughs> we know he is. We know he is. Uh, Baz, we, we were just talking about this off air. Uh, Bazzy's Backdoor Cinema as a subseries has existed now for a year and a month. And it turns out that our first episode we did was on Scream 5. So we've reached that nice run number of 10, which means almost an episode a month. So we take that as a win for us. If you think, yeah, as a win as well. So. I, I thought that um, there were pretty few and far between. But, like, back in the early days, I was only maybe doing one. Maybe Sometimes I would do two episodes a month. Yeah. Um, granted, some of the um, some of the episodes could be fairly sizable, right enough. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm, I'm quite impressed by that. If, if we're, we're, we're pushing nearly an episode a month, that'll do for me, Cocker. Yeah, I don't, that makes me very, very happy, and um, I know that makes you uncomfortable. So we'll move on to something that makes me marginally <laughs> unhappy, and that is the discussion that we'll be having uh, tonight on a uh, Scream Six, which me and you took in at the cinema. Um, we've been we've been kind of fairly busy with the old cinema visits, you and I. Yeah, yeah, we had a, a bit of a dearth over uh, or leading up to Christmas, but it's kind of kicked up a notch just since the new year came in. Yeah, it's um, it's full on. Like I'm trying to think in the last, in the last like couple of weeks, I've been to the cinema. Notwithstanding Fright Fest, loads, and yeah, um, yeah. we're going to be at the cinema next week, where both yourself, myself, and Big Sex Bomb Dave takes in the what can only be described as the majesty of the Pope's Exorcist. I mean, one be so day advance screening, it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. Like I said, it may only be one day advanced screening, but I cannot possibly wait another 24 hours yeah, to just what? listen to Big Russell Crowe butcher whatever fucking accent that is he is serving. Here's here's the thing, right? Russell Crowe, right? Famous Australian actor. As in the, the Pope's Exorcist playing what we presume is an Italian, which he did play in Gladiator, and he didn't have an accent at all. So I'm just yeah. confused now. You know, like, I, I'm, I'm just confused as to what is going on. The the Catholic Church has got a bit of a bad kind of rap in Australia at the moment. Um, <laughs> one of their cardinals, he's like the most senior member of the church ever to be convicted of historical abuse. Um, and he was... I want to say he was something like the Vatican treasurer or something at one point. Fucking anyway, hell. he was uh, Australian. He's just been done. The problem like that, Russell, mate, we can't have an Australian accent in this movie about the Pope's exorcist. Can you just pretend that you're Dracula for an hour and a half or whatever the fuck it is? 
like, like, international damage control via Russell Crowe, a man who has beat up people, including journalists and photographers. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, why didn't they go with Mel Gibson? We'll hey, well, he he we'll does a... big, mad, crazy Catholic. He loves them. I mean, I, I, I think, I'm not like, obviously, you'll take these things with a pinch of salt. I, I think, like, yeah, Passion of the Christ is still in the top 10 movies of all time in terms of money that it's brought in. Which is, is just. Is that insane. right? Yeah, I'm sure. Like, it did, it did silly, 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 silly money. Um, for most of the reasons that you imagine, probably because they're constantly spinning it, <laughs> like in Vatican City. Yeah. Just don't look. It's what you see in the bars. It's not. It's not like. It's not things like football or rugby or that. It's the passion of the Christ. <laughs> I've I've never seen it. Never seen it. Um, I do, I do remember at the time when it was coming out though. What a, a colleague of mine at work had just converted to Catholicism. Mm-hmm. Um, he was marrying, um, and he was marrying a Catholic, and he converted, and he he took a deep dive into Catholicism <laughs> at that point in time. And uh, he, he talked about it incessantly. Yeah. Um, like, he, he kept going on about the scene, the flagellation scene in it, which again, mm-hmm. I've not I've not seen the film, but I'm aware that Jesus was flagellated just before he was crucified and all that kind of stuff. The way this fella was talking, you'd have thought this was a documentary that you were watching. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and like, at best, this is their best estimate. You know, I mean, we, oh, we, we don't know what happened. Nobody was there. We Jesus <laughs> wasn't even there. <laughs> Only kidding, big man, if you're watching. <laughs> I do know that the Lord God is a, a big, big listener of the show. <laughs> I, I do, I do love the fact that I like, I, for the listeners out there that don't know, I do have a giant bingo card in front of me, which just has all the races, all the religions, um, all yeah. the, the the genders, and they are just sitting awake to tick off who it is we're going to offend on these episodes. Um, it's good to see the Catholics getting it because they don't get a lot from us. Well, you know, I thought we'll we'll start off early. We'll give the Catholics a booting, and then we'll just fucking denounce all Christianity, take them all out one fell swoop. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh man, um, I am. Um, I was. Don't I, hope I, those I, Jews I, aren't getting too comfortable. <laughs> They're next in the crosshairs. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, um, we, we were joking about this on the Tuesday. So Monday was um, Scream 6, we went away and saw it. Then Tuesday was uh, Infinity Pro, which I'd already seen a couple of times. But I've really watched Yeah, but I wasn't at that one. Yeah, which... I think even Dave remarked at the end was he wasn't sure if you would have liked it or not, but it was totally a Baz movie because I, I don't know. I like I maybe undersold it to you about how much nudity is in that movie, of which it's riddled. There's a massive orgy right in the middle, and it doesn't hold anything away. Plus, this was the UK one for our American listeners out there. I'd seen the American cut, which mm-hmm. I didn't realize was it, it took out. A ton of the shagging, like loads. Like, the American joke- cut did. Yeah, well, I joked with you about the. It was kind of partial joke, partial like actually happens in the movie about the reach around aggressive handy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, happens. yeah, yeah. Well, what I didn't realise is I'd seen the American cut and the British cut, and this fucking floored me. The uncut version. Uh, the camera zooms to obviously a fake, but um, very realistic looking dick ejaculate on camera <laughs> nice on. and I nice. was like um, and I could just feel the uncomfortable wave from Dave sitting beside me going what is he fucking <laughs> what has he brought me to but yeah you saw things going in and out of people and massive orgy scenes in the middle and I, I was kind of just sitting there going Baz picked a movie like this would have been so much more fun to talk about like <laughs> pulled from the internet of course, but um, it would be much more fun to talk about. But yeah, we've we've got loads, and then there's loads coming up. So Evil Dead Rise is probably the biggest one for us in April. But yeah. we have the new Renfield movie as well, which I've seen the trailer about a million times now to the point that I'm actually sick of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's another couple of things as well. So yeah, a surprising amount of films out there 
for us to watch. So uh, we will be keeping the peeps up to date as and when we pick something we think is worthy of the backdoor cinema. Um, my question to you is, good sir, um, have you been watching anything that you'd like to update us on and that relates to things in the realm of podcasts under the stairs? Um, out, out with, I don't think I've watched any films because, mm. you know, I, I was at, I did Fright Fest, obviously, we've talked about that, and you and I have, have done quite a few cinema trips, so I've not really watched any movies at home. Um, I have started watching Yellow Jackets, mm. which the the TV series um, about the girls' soccer team that crash land in the wilderness kind of thing. Um, I'm about halfway, I think, through season one. Quite enjoying that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly thanks to some very vigorous finger popping right in the opening scene, man. This is I mean, straight in it there. Me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm watching Yellow Jackets, and I, I was like that. Oh, I hear it's pretty good, and you're like that. First episode. Like, right away. Just finger banging. And I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> like, you're like, why? <laughs> just, <laughs> you're like, huh? Yes, <laughs> sir. Yes, sir, indeed. Um, and the there's a, an actress in it that I really like, uh, Liv Hewson. She was the daughter in Santa Clarita Diet. Oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. The red-headed girl. So she's in it. And she, she's not in... Obviously, she plays one of the... Um, one of the, the soccer team. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's not in it huge amounts uh, in the first season, but I, I think I'm aware that um, I think her f- character and another one get focused on more heavily in the second season, which I'm looking forward to. Quite cool. excited. I like her a lot. Um, her comedic timing, I think, is fucking great. Um, mm-hmm. And also, it turns out it's just been revealed she's a wee lazy bobber in this one, so we're hoping for some more finger banging. That'll be it's cool AF. <laughs> it's AF. <cool AF. laughs> it's on the list. It's on the the very long list of things for me. Yeah. To eventually I mean, it's, so it's split over two time zones, so that you get the story from the crash and, and the, yeah. the teenage girls, and then it's split with them now. And there's stuff that's happened that we don't know and all that. But the adult ones, we've got um, Christina Ricci plays one of them. Oh. Um, Juliette Lewis plays another one, actually. Um, awesome. She, she's demented in it. Uh, and she walked on in one of her first scenes wearing a Death to the Pixies t-shirt, which was cool as fuck. <laughs> and then she's driving a car and she's rocking Jane's Addiction. Boom. Good enough and for me. And you know that's not fake. You know because well, she obviously she fronted. Oh, Juliet's got the yeah. She's OG man. She's yeah. OG. She's got the props. Yeah, she's got a not prop. a problem. So we're not going to hate her for wearing like because no. you, you do have an irrational. I mean, I like I'm I'm very much at if you own the t-shirt, listen to listen to the band, right? That's yeah. what I'm going to say. But you're just you're militant on that. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. One of those Kardashian cunts. Was uh, I saw a photograph of her the other day? She had an agnostic front T-shirt on. Agnostic front. Know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck knows what we've any stigma made of that. It, but isn't one of them what, like not that I want to like devolve into like fucking like pop culture and all the rest? But isn't like one of them is married to or is like seriously involved with Travis Barker? So. Is that not something that maybe he played and she got into? I don't know. Nah, <laughs> nah I'm not having that. Nah, nah. It was a white, long sleeve agnostic front top. Who the, who the hell would wear that? Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's obviously fake. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> like this, this obviously not real. Agnostic Assholes. front didn't earn a penny off that. No, they did not. They did not. But... Some wee fucking terp that's doing fucking designs for Urban Outfitters or something's probably coining it in. You know what I mean? Dicks. <laughs> right, before I anger you anymore, let's <laughs> let's let's get into this. Um ladies and gents. Oh yes. Um this is a video podcast, by the way, so if you're checking us out on one of the apps that allows you to view video podcasts, specifically Spotify, you're seeing our visage. If you are listening right now on a 
standard podcatcher and you're like you know what i want to see these sexy motherfuckers then you can do that on the youtube page the link is in the show notes or listen to both why not double up listen to the audio and then put a face to the voice and um, we are going to jump in and do our review of screen six now some of you out there might still not have seen the movie granted it's been it for a few weeks so we will tell you up front that we will be doing non-spoiler and spoiler and it will be in the show notes as to when the spoilers will be starting we will try where possible to keep that non-spoiler tight and with as little detail as possible out with the stuff that justifies our scoring um, on top of that, we are going to play the trailer. So we're going to jump in and play the trailer. Now, if this is the video version, YouTube loves to pull things down. So we will play it, but I know some people have said, why is it kind of like faded and there's like an opacity thing on it or whatever? Um, it's not like full in the middle. That's because YouTube likes to strip things down or hit you with copy strike warnings and all the rest. Well, allow me to play the audio, will not allow me to play the video. So that is why that is happening. Just skip ahead if you don't want to watch it. And uh, myself and the Baz coming back. Non-spoiler, Scream 6. Coming right up, right after this. It's for you. <laughs> Strange that you and I have never spoken on the phone. This is long overdue. What is this place? A shrine. <laughs> Did you miss me? He's gonna keep coming after us. Maybe he gets to win this time. We've got to lure him in. Gonna be execute him. Hear you're a horror fan. It's been said. Everywhere and Friday. And welcome back, ladies and gents. So let's do this, shall we? This is Scream 6. It has just been released in March 2023. This is directed by the directing duo of Matt <laughs> Bettinelli, Oplin, maybe, or Alpine. Alpine? Olapine. Olapin. Pinna, pinna, pinna. Uh, and Tyler Gillette, uh, still laughing at me. Uh, the movie stars Courtney Cox, Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, Jasmine Savoy Brown, Mason Gooding, Skeet Ulrich, um, once in the voice, because he's CGI. Anyway, um, Roger Jackson, Dermot Moroni, Jack Champion. Uh, we have Josh Sagara, Liana Liberato. Um, Hayden Pantieri, yeah, Pantier, uh, <laughs> aka Bazzi's Uber Crush. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. Uh, we've got Samara Weaving in here, Henry Cerny, and some other folks. But we ain't gonna spend any more time discussing that pish when we could be sitting talking about the writers of this one being James Vanderbilt, Guy Busick, and Kevin Williamson. Uh, the synopsis for this movie is listed on IMDb as in the next installment, the survivors of the ghost face killing leave Woodsboro behind and start a fresh chapter in New York City. But as you know, if they can make it there, they can make it anywhere. Absolutely, and it's so good they named it twice, Big Man. <laughs> God damn Big Apple. Um, <laughs> let's take a slice. Uh, right, um... Okay, I, I have teased this on the old uh, Facebook, so we will get into this. Um, I don't think it's widely differing opinions, but we came out the cinema and one of us was a lot happier than the other. Yes. <laughs> That's safe to see. <laughs> so, Duncan Bell. Yes, yes, maybe that happened, Duncan. Or maybe it didn't. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we, we came out at different, at different kind of feelings overall, but 
Um, we are fans of the series. You would have heard us talk about uh, part five um, last year, and both of us were pretty high on that movie. I thought, yeah. as he returned, I thought they did it really well. Part five are you talking about? Yes, part five. I think as a return to coming back and doing Scream again after so long away and kind of bringing back a character who is kind of a pop culture icon now, isn't it? It could have went wrong in so many ways. And I thought personally they handled it really fucking well. And I know that you were all being similar, Mike. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, re- I really enjoyed the last one. Um, I kind of saw it as a a real kind of passing of the baton type movie. Um, I don't think I'm really... I think we could spoil part five at this point in time. Oh, fuck, yes, yes. I, I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not holding myself responsible for anyone that, that has part five spoiled for them listening to a review of part six. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you know, fair, fair point, well made. Um, yeah, so obviously we had the, the demise of Dewey, who'd been a a regular cast member in all the previous movies. Um, yeah, we had we had Sydney back in that one, but it became apparent that she wasn't going to be doing any more. And yeah, mm. just we introduced this new gamut of characters. Um, and actually, previous to going to see part six, I had intended to watch part five again and forgot. And so I was a little bit like, who are all of these fucking people? It took me a wee while. It took me maybe 10, 15 minutes to kind of start piecing it all back together. Yeah. Um, Thankfully, the the film does give you a kind of a breaking in period for that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, no, I I really enjoyed part five. Um, I liked what they did. In terms of the movie, I liked all the little spins they put on everything so there was a lot of familiarity mm-hmm. there but they would twist it and do it in a different way i i, I thoroughly enjoyed part five um i would have probably said it'd, it'd be up there with the not as good as the first or the second one but not far behind them kind of thing i would have probably put it above part three and part four i don't know if i'd 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 have definitely above part three. I might actually have it above part. See, I always struggle with this one because my order always changes. Every year I enjoy part four more. I'm at the point now that part four is is verging into the top two. Um, because I just really like what it did. Uh, which, and there's obviously a link to this movie with Hayden, um, with the surname. I see her. Yeah, yeah. Um, her making a return. She was... Uh, presumed dead at the end of the fourth one um but turns out wasn't because she's here so right let's let's get into this because the big push for this movie when they like screen five huge financial success as in fucking huge to the point that they were all they were saying within i I think before the movie even came out they were charting off like pre like pre-sale tickets and all the rest how well it was going to do and off that it had been greenlit for the next movie and not only that they were going to do it the following year so it was all systems go uh you mentioned uh neve campbell having uh pulled out of the movie the reasons behind that as documented online are to do with pay so that's not to say that she'll never come back but essentially she found out <laughs> don't know how she found out that maybe she wasn't getting paid the same rate as certain male cast members in the franchise, which boggles the mind. Um, and I think she asked for more money, and they said no. Um, and I think they thought they could call her bluff, and she was like, no. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Literally just shot her. And um, you know, listeners out there, that me and Baz are big proponents of equal pay. Um, so, yeah, yes, pay indeed. the woman the money like she is the face of your franchise so yeah, just absolutely the and there is no doubt some freeloading piece of shit living in her house that she needs to keep you know in the in the manner that he's accustomed to pay pay the bitch the money <laughs> I, lo- I love that as soon as you said that there was not like a hint of jealousy about this freeloading man that's living 
uh, rent free uh, 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 in the uh, <laughs> the sanctity of uh, Neve Campbell's. Uh, Neve Campbell's vagina, basically, <laughs> yeah. is the phrase that we're scutting her in here. <laughs> Pause deep. Um, so, uh, yeah, so she wasn't back and we've relocated it to New York. The big joke was, and we're going to get to it later on why these things irritate me. The big joke was, oh, they're going to take it to New York. It's going to be Scream Takes Manhattan. You know, like yeah. Jason Takes Manhattan. But Jason didn't actually take Manhattan. Jason's only at the scene. It was Jason Takes Toronto because it was all shot in Canada and on a boat. And this is why I hate the internet. Um, so, and yourself, just a little bit, I think. Just a t- I, see, I didn't write it. I saw them say it. I did not write it. I can think it, but I did not write it. So that's all I'm saying. I was an accomplice, but I wasn't like... I, I, I was shouting from the sideline, but I was not on the street during the marches. That's what I'm saying. Um... Yeah, right. So let's get let's get into this. And the non-spoilers, what we like to do is kind of in rough, broad strokes cover what we liked, what we didn't like. We'll look back round. We'll give you a grade. We'll then kind of justify our stance in the spoiler section. So once again, as a very polite reminder to listeners out there, if you've not seen the movie, then you can listen to this bit free and safe in the knowledge that we're not going to spoil it for you. But if you go beyond the bit where I'm like, we're spoiling it now, that is on you. And if you get all righty and bitchy about it, then we will ridicule you. <laughs> so don't do it. Um, so yeah, I things I liked about this one. Um, I thought pacing-wise, the movie was paced really well. I actually mm-hmm. really enjoyed the opening scene, like as Scream opening segments go. I actually think this might be one of my favourites because it kind of subverted a lot of the expectations I had about what I was going to see. It kind of is very playful. In a lot of ways, it reminded me of Scream 4 has... It, it does the Inception meta, meta, meta thing. So movie within a movie within a movie in the, in the intro. And this one, it doesn't do that, but it does a kind of almost... Um, a fake away, which I think mm-hmm. it does really, really, really well, and then grounds it back in in a way which actually makes kind of quasi sense to what you're watching um, until later on. But uh, for that, I enjoyed that. I like I say, I thought the pacing was good. I like this cast of characters. I'm, I'll be honest. I I think that uh, Melissa Barina and Jenna Ortega as Sam and Tara Carpenter are great characters. Um, I'm not maybe as high on Mindy and Chad, who are the 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 nephew and niece of Randy, the video store worker. Um, they're fine. I I, can, I found that at times a lot of the the exposition was handled via them, which uh, I was okay with. I like the fact that they didn't drop the ski Ulrich thing. That they had in the previous movie because it'd be really easy just not to do that anymore. Um, yeah, because I don't know. There was a bit of me felt that that whole kind of subplot mm. with him. So he, he was obviously was it Billy, wasn't it, in the first movie? Yep. Um, I, I personally felt that didn't land very well mm. in the last movie. And yeah, you're right in what you're saying. The easiest thing in the world. That they could have done was just completely dingy and go, ah, yeah, that never happened. Um, yeah. And, and there, there's too much of that these days with all your yeah. fucking requels and all this kind of thing, you know, and do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, Evil yeah. Evil dies tonight, Buzz. Evil yes, dies tonight. Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know how that Evil Dies Tonight carried on and really, really made a massive impact in Halloween. Oh, it, no, it didn't actually. No, that never, never did end. Um, so yeah, like that is not bitter at all. Um, and some of the other like new additions, um, I, I thought were kind of cool. Uh, you've got a uh, Jack Champion who plays a uh, roommate Ethan Landry. Thought that worked really, really well. Um, I liked seeing Hayden back on screen as Kirby, a character who I could take or leave in part four. I know she's supposed to be the sexy horror fan. Um, We'll get to my, my gripes with that later on. Um, and then even 
I even enjoyed like the like Samara Weaving has the she's in the intro, um, and she is your ostensibly she is your um, oh the name Drew Barrymore character, uh-huh. you know, it's a famous actress you expect. I didn't pick up her. that that was Samara Weaving. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no that's, so that's totally her. So yeah, it, it yeah. makes sense as well because uh, both Samara Weaving and. Uh, the psychologist in this movie, um, Henry Cersei, um are in Ready or Not. So, which was directed by these directors. So, right. um, that ca- kind of made sense to me that they carried over for relatively small roles here. You know, I mean, I could imagine them phoning up and saying to Samara, you know, do you want to be in the, the opening of a screen movie? And her going, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, you know, mm, I mean? yeah. it's an easy job to do. And she's, she's, she's a lot of fun in it. She's very great. Um, once again, I think the humour in in the movie is well pitched. Um, it gets a bit, it gets slapsticky, but Scream has always been a slapsticky sort of um, franchise, so so that worked for me. Um, like I say, I thought the pacing was good. It's gory. I mean, there's no getting around that. The practical effects are great. Um, so I, I kind of like that. I even liked the the look of Ghostface, the kind of aged. Mm-hmm. Mask, even though that does remind me now of fucking Halloween from 2018. Yeah, um, it's like the kind of perished rubber kind of look yeah. of, of the mask and so on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I, enjoy, I, I I like that look about it because it's just not the clean cut version we get. And it's also a good way because this is set during Halloween to differentiate between those, from an audience perspective, those who are and who are not the ghost face killer. When there's a lot on the screen, so yes. I enjoyed that aspect. Um, I'm going to stop there on the what I enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to you uh, if you want to elaborate on anything I've said or pick up on something I haven't said. What did you like about Scream Six, Baz? Uh, yeah, sure. There was, there was quite a lot about the movie. I liked. Um, I liked the opening sequence, mm. um, much as yourself. But what I really liked about the opening sequence was at the time, like I, so you watch that first kind of 10 minute scene. Yep. And it plays out the way it plays out, right? And I was a bit like, uh, are, they, are they trying too hard here? Mm-hmm. But actually, by the time I got to the end of the movie, I quite dug the start of it. It, it was yep. weird. It, it's just tonally, if you just watch that uh, as a little standalone vignette kind of thing, it's, oh, I don't know. Have you did you pitch that right, or have you gone too far? You know. Yeah. But as as the film plays out, and then you start to reflect on some of the earlier bits, I, I really did enjoy it kind of thing, um, and. It kind of that kind of set the scene for me, and I felt that the film kind of keeps you off kilter quite a bit through mm-hmm. it. Um, you kind of flip and flop as to what's happening and maybe who's who's doing what a bit more than possibly in previous ones. Yeah. Um, so I, I liked all of that. Um, well, that's, that, I, that thing in the in the dialogue in the movie, and it's in the trailer, so people will have seen, if you've seen the trailer, you've seen it, where they basically, in a screen movie, what characters say is very important to how the movie is going to play out, because Kevin Williamson likes to very much blatantly point to things that are going to happen in the movie, and they openly say in several segments, this is a sequel to a requel, which means any legacy character can die. In fact, if anything, uh-huh. they're kind of encouraged to die, and you've come off a movie where a legacy character has died, so uh-huh. you are on the back foot because you are thinking, "Oh fuck, any every everyone <laughs> like everyone could fucking die." So yeah, you yeah. are like at, at points when there were scenes of someone being stalked or injured or like brutally attacked. I was in the back of my head thinking, "All right, well, like they're out the franchise now." Yeah. I mean, just actively, and I, I don't know if I've been that way in previous movies. In previous movies, the Dewey death really surprised me, actually, in part uh-huh. five, because I je- cause I'd seen part four, and they'd promised like some big shake-up of the franchise, and none of the main characters died in part four. Um, and then you kill off one of the core three. Yeah. 
And I'm like, oh, what are we doing here? So in this one, I had the assumption that we might lose one or two of our main characters at a minimum. So yeah, yeah it kept me on my toes. Yeah, I, I would agree with that as well. Um, I had one particular theory that I don't want to mention until we get to yep. the spoilers, and, and I'll bring that back up. Um, what else did I like? Um, I liked uh, the kills that we got. Um, there's a particular a, a fall from height kind of kill without yes. ruining anything kind of about midway through it I thought was excellent to the point that I think I flinched in the <laughs> cinema you know when you get the pay off for it I thought that was really good um, I liked yeah I, I'm, I'm with you I liked the visuals that they did with Ghostface but I liked that there are two or three scenes in it where he is much more kind of vicious and yeah. Ghostface obviously always had that kind of comedic flailing arms, you know, running like a lunatic into doors and all that kind of thing, mm-hmm. kind of comedic slant to it. And you get enough of that that it kind of pays homage to Ghostface because it's the only reason we're still watching this thing six films yeah. in. Um. But there were, there was a few of the scenes where where it is genuinely quite frightening. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a particular scene with Courtney Cox, um, again, about midway in the movie. I thought it was excellent the way they did that. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. I I was really pleased with what they had done with Ghostface as a character because, like most horror horror villains, you know... it's, it's masked, so you, you can't convey yeah. anything really through the face. Um, we also know as well, because of the way Scream operates, it's not the same person, so, so you can't yeah. build up a character over the movies because they're going to die at the end and yeah. somebody yeah. else will come back as Ghostface later on. So yeah, I, I quite liked what they did with Ghostface in this. Um, my overall feeling when I came out the movie was that I had I had enjoyed it. I had a good time watching the film. Mm-hmm. Glad I went to see it at the cinema. Um, liked a li- I, I didn't like everything in this film, and we're coming on to talk fairly soon about what we didn't like about it. You know, I had issues with it as well. But overall, I had a good time watching this movie. And as I was thinking about it in the, the kind of intervening couple of days in between watching it and now that recording this, I was kind of thinking, you know, that's the the sixth film in Mm -hmm. this franchise. And looking back, so I was doing a bit of Googling when you were speaking earlier, so (laughs) Friday the 13th, the sixth one was Jason Lives. Yep. Halloween, we had The Curse of Michael Myers. Yep. And Nightmare on Elm Street, well, Nightmare on Elm Street, in fairness, the sixth one was The Final Nightmare. Oh no, sorry, I'm confused with New Nightmare because the final nightmare yeah. was Doug Shite. Absolutely um, Doug Shite. Although, wait, 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 we're going to rein it back here. You are not in good conscience going to sit here and try and tell me that Friday the 13th Part 6 is not a good movie because it's a fucking great movie. So <laughs> I'll, 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 I will happily sit here and shit from a great height on Halloween Part 6, which is utter dog shit. And <laughs> I, once again, I will happily shit upon from a great height Friday the 13th, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6, I will not I will not have a bad word said about Friday the 13th Part 6 it's fucking great, They're like it's Frankenstein it's, it's amazing you to the bin Let's see, you're kind of <laughs> shot. You, like, you were literally winning people over and then you said that and everyone's going to like back at you I know what you mean Like, but you know I what I mean, thinking, normally yeah that by, by the by the sixth movie in a franchise, mm. it, it's normal for the, the the quality to be dropping. Now, in course, fairness, yeah. perhaps Scream benefits for the fact that it came along much later, and it has had far less films before this kind of resurgence of horror that we've had maybe in the past five or six years. The game, yeah, well, I also like, think it had its head. really bad one in the middle. Yes, I mean, uh-huh. like, part three is fucking awful, and I think 
everyone knows part three is awful. Yeah. And as a result of that, part four was where the part four they tried to take it back to basics and that works for some people it really works for me it didn't work for other people at the time and i know it's gaining a bit of a, a kind of cult following now um and part five was another attempt to go back to basics on it mm-hmm. because i think they'd seen they'd went so far out there with it away from what the franchise was that kind of like the kind of halloween thing of it's grounded in haddonfield you have that the mass killer that comes out every season kills off everyone knows each other like i'd, I'd moved so far away from that by the time they put it in hollywood were meta jokes about like when you've got jane silent bob as a cameo in the background uh and carrie fisher like and like playing someone who looks like Carrie Fisher but isn't Carrie Fisher all that stuff is just it's is mind boggling why that's in the movie I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't understand why it's in the movie um, as a result it kind of falls apart I think the franchise very much like a, a seed of Chucky and the Chucky franchise which I for my sins I'm watching a TV show at the moment um, that was to me the low point of that franchise so much so that when they came back with curse and cult it was kind of like a right let's make chucky scary let's go back to it why do people like these movies what's well, a killer doll going around it's not really the the wisecracking one one-liners it's more the you know he's vicious and mm-hmm. mani- manipulative and terrifying now let's go back to that i think scream like you touched on it here there's a scene in a, a kind of a grocery store yes. which is tense as fuck which yeah, is tense yeah, yeah. as fuck. Um, and I remember when it played in part of the trailers and everyone was up in arms because Ghostface had, I say everyone, the internet, uh, was up in arms because he was holding a shotgun and they were like, mm. well, he shouldn't have a gun. It's a slasher movie. Terrifying. Like, Ghostface yeah, yeah. with a shotgun is terrifying. Yeah. So isn't that the point? Like, 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 isn't it to make the character scary? Um, so yeah, that whole scene. And you're, you're, you're right. And later on when we're in Gail's apartment, that scene as well, terrifying yeah, yeah. like it's, it's structured really it's structured in such a way that it made me think of the first movie like that for the first movie in that opening scene with drew barrymore or even later on with sydney being chased around the house um, yes her own house like those scenes are like genuinely tense slasher scenes mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you get at least two of them in this movie which i mean there's two more than we get in a lot of other movies that call themselves slashers so once again a tick yeah, and I mean, with, with the sheer volume of slashers that have been and gone and come back again, it is hard to make scenes tense and, and genuinely kind of frightening in any kind of way. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it all just seems a bit ridiculous. But yeah, no, I, I really think they nailed it. Um, other things, yeah, there's, there's laughs in it, there's all your wee meta things for all the horror film geeks that they, they all love. Um, and in particular, you kind of touched on it, there's a, a scene between um, Kirby, Hayden Panettiere's character, and, oh, what's the, what's Chad's sister called? Uh, Mindy. Mindy. Um, is it, it's between the two of them and they kind of have a kind of horror off. Yeah, um, and that tickled me. I quite enjoyed that. It's just, it's just meta enough, but kind of poked fun at itself a little bit, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the characters in a nice way. So yeah, yeah. So like I say, there was a lot that I enjoyed about this film. There's a lot to take from it. And my overriding feeling when I came out was I'd enjoyed myself, had a good time watching the movie, thought it was good fun. So we're, we'll put our cards down on the table. Baz was the perky optimist as he came out. Uh, me, not so much. I sighed a lot in the back half of this movie. You and did. Not because of you its did. run time, but it just started doing things that really started annoying me. Um, some of the dialogue in the back half is, is borderline atrocious, if I'm honest. And I'll cite examples of of that uh, when we come to spoilers. Um, yeah, the, the, big, the biggest issue for me overall was the setting i don't think taking this away from it's just one of the i've just mentioned that the reason i don't think part three works all that well out with a lot of dodgy choices is i don't like the setting i don't like the idea of being on the movie set in hollywood 
where like it's like like everything's huge and like you're like the the opening scene with the death in the cinema fucking hate that um it just feels so like why would you do that i get the stalking someone in a house because you like the chances of you getting away with that murder are high the chances of you killing someone in a cinema and getting away with it in that manner puts you at immense risk and just annoyed me um and this one i don't like new york as a setting at all um i it threw up the longer it went on the more devices they used in it the more i disliked um and then the dialogue and even the reveal so i i guessed can't go into numbers because we'll get to that i guessed at least 50 percent of the reveal at the end um and there was one curveball which i didn't guess because it's fucking stupid um so that's a big issue for me and uh, it's not as if the previous movies hadn't haven't had stupid reveals they have at times um but i can kind of roll with them i just couldn't roll with this one i just it, it really annoyed me um and then <laughs> We'll get to uh, most of it spoilery, so I can't. I can't really, yeah. All I'm going to say is, I, the first half of the movie it had me in. I was locked and loaded. I thought this was really, really good. I liked, it. I liked everything the way it was going. I loved the pacing of it. Then the back half of the movie, it, the longer it went on, the more I started to feel myself getting pulled out of it and being a bit critical. Um, and when I started like doing the old critic eyes on it, 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 it started to fall apart pretty bad for me. Um, so by the end, I was I was immensely frustrated. Um, yeah, um, and we had a brief talk about it outside, but um, I settled on what my grade was. It is a fair grade for it, and I will justify it in the back end. But yeah, that was the biggest thing for me is the back half of the movie doesn't work as well as the first half of the movie. Uh, what about yourself? Things you didn't like? Things I didn't like... Um... I was disappointed with the body count. Mm. Um, Good call. I, I didn't think there was anywhere near enough. And in fact, I'll maybe, maybe touch on that. Yeah. Tied into <laughs> that, there's some stuff that happens towards the end of the film that did annoy me. Yeah. Um, yeah, like as I said, a big city. Like yeah. New York, which has a high fucking murder rate, you're moving it there, yet ghost face killings, I think, are maybe less than the previous movie. I'm prepared to be wrong on that one. Mm -hmm. Like, fully prepared to be wrong on that one. But I actually think the body count's lower in this movie. It, it, it certainly felt that way. Now, yeah. there are people out there that probably counted them, and as you say, <laughs> we might be wrong, but it felt less. Yeah. And at the end of the day, well, that, that's your takeaway, isn't it? It's how you yes. felt at oh, the I... end of it kind of thing. So, yeah, I was a bit disappointed in that. I felt that the in, in part five, you know, they made some pretty brave decisions, particularly the one around Dewey. And mm. I feel in this film, they bottled a lot of stuff. And that yeah. annoyed me. Sorry, bottling um, for Americans. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> they can... Uh, what, what would a shout out of, you know? Yeah, um, but, but like, yeah, like, um, it got cold feet. Yeah, yeah, didn't didn't follow through with some of the stuff. So that annoyed me a bit. Um, I don't know if this is an actual criticism of the film. I kind of twigged the protagonist yeah. very early in the film due to a kind of throwaway line. That might be more to do with just me having seen so many bloody horror films nowadays and <laughs> just picking up and you know you always talk about if you see a you know a, a broken bottle sitting somewhere yeah. you know that half an hour later that's going in somebody's neck so that may have been a part of it there i i didn't mind the ending and the reveal and all that the the the, the part just prior to that the kind of uh, the, the the setup. Um, yeah. There is a kind of ghost faced slayer 
for want of a better term, and it's not that, so I'm not spoiling anything. But <laughs> that bit, I, I kind of thought, all oh, right, that's maybe a bit much. But yeah. again, I kept saying in my head, this is the sixth fucking movie, and it's the Scream franchise. <laughs> So let's cut them some fucking slack here. Um, yeah, yeah I, th- I think the sort of biggies for me was the the lack of body count. Yeah, I um, can confirm actually Scream 5, I was checking while you were saying, Scream 5 has eight deaths, Scream 6 has ten. No, oh, there you go. But I there think there is a get out of jail as to the number of killers, which kind of is unfair in this one, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know true. I mean. uh, that's so true. yeah, we'll 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 swing it, we'll swing it into the spoilers. But there you go. So you thought body cam? Yeah, that that was my main kind of gripes. Um, yeah, it is a bit batshit at points. Yeah, it is a bit out there. But it's the sixth film in a slasher franchise, so they've got to keep pushing the envelope a bit. I mean, they actually talk about that in the movie when they're doing all their meta kind of stuff. Um, and I thought that they managed to do it relatively well, so that wasn't a particularly big thing for me. Right, there we go. Let's do scores. Um, so, yeah, I settled on a three um, for this one. I was going to give it a 2.5. I've rolled up to a three because, like I say, the back half of the film doesn't work, but from a, a technical aspect and from a pacing aspect, even though the back half didn't work for me, fucking flew in. Um, and I think... interesting like because you're obviously saying the sixth one in a franchise i know i'm a mark for friday the 13th movies but friday the 13th part six gets 4.5 for me so like i just think it's i think it's just a really well contained well put together movie but then i'm thinking of all the other franchises that have a part six and they, they probably don't score as high as a three um so it's it, like it's like it's not a bad movie it's not a bad movie and I can see I liked it, but I will go into great detail as to, trust me, I will, um, as to all the stuff that infuriated me. The stuff that infuriated me did not make me hate the movie. Mm-hmm. So it just, it, it made me feel like there were some opportunities here that were missed in favour of something I don't think that works. So I will, I will, I will keep my mouth shut. What about yourself? I gave it a three. Where are you coming in? I have been toiling a little bit, a bit about this and I think we're probably actually going to score a lot closer than you thought I think I'm going to give it a three and a half alright I don't know if I can really turn around and say that I love this film yep which would allow me to give it a four if I feel if I was giving it a four I'm maybe well remember f- uh, five is love it four is really like it so does that allow you to Change your grade to a four. Oh, look, I'm thinking, ladies and gents, we're throwing a curveball, a wrench in the gears. Oh, where's it going to no, th- <laughs> no, I... No, th- I think I'm going to stick it at three and a half. I'm going to stick yeah. it at three and a half. Um, I preferred the predecessor. You know, I, I thought five was yeah. a better movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. Three and a half. Right, ladies and gents. Well, there you go. That You now know our scores. You now know the setup. In this next segment, we're going to spoil the movie and we're going to justify why we gave it the grades we are and give a bit of context to some of our comments. We're going to be doing that right after this. Right, ladies and gents. We're in spoiler territory. Don't say you weren't warned. Um, so, we talked about the opening segment. I think it's worthwhile giving a bit of context to that as to why we think yep. it actually makes something worthy of, of like real discussion. I think, and I genuinely mean this, I think it's up there amongst my favourites. I think my favourite, if I had to order my favourite, my top three would be part one, part four, and then this. Well, I, I think it's that strong. You know, it's like my third favourite open. Um, it plays out with... Um, uh, Samara Weaving on a, a date in the city. She's obviously met someone over a nap. She's waiting to, you know, waiting for them in this this, um, this bar, and she gets a call, and the guy's lost, and 
she's having a bit of flirty banter. We obviously know as the as the audience um, that she's being set up. We find out that she's a professor of slasher movies. Didn't know that was a thing, but let's <laughs> roll with it. Um, I'm not disputing there are people out there that are professors in slasher movies or that genre. I'm just saying they don't look like Samara Weaving, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's goddamn true. Even a little bit, right? Well, you, you are already pushing things here to breaking point with Hayden What's Her Tits being like a super horror fan. And then you're bringing Samara Weaving in and she's a slasher professor. <laughs> and you saw them trying so hard in this movie, but they were trying so hard to win me over. They mentioned Argento. They mentioned yep. Giallo. Giallo got a mention. So hard. But they mentioned Giallo and then the only director they can come up with is Argento, lazy fucking writing, lazy writing, obvious writing. Oh, I wrote. I, I'd feel. I'd feel that cunt's paper as well if he handed it in, and it was a paper on Jallos, and it was only about Argento. Fuck that guy. Anyway, <laughs> right. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna get to some other things. Um, yeah, fucking Jallo paper. It's a slasher class. What are you doing? Um, I can feel you as well. Uh, aye. So uh, the the whole thing is the the guy's lost to you know is to get her out of the bar she ends up in an alley she ends up being stabbed to death instantly we reveal the killer we've never done that before can't help but feel that that's a nod to like a movie like a bay of blood which you've never seen but you should um where we get the killer reveal straight away and i was like oh fuck um we find out the killer was actually one of our students um who was very upset that he had failed his jallo paper um, and then it goes back to his ultra cool apartment, which had posters of fucking last podcast on the left. They were trying so hard at the start of this movie, but they were like, yeah. we can get Duncan in. We can get him in. Fucking Jason takes Manhattan on the telly. That pissed me off, right? I'm going to put them that aside. I get the end joke. Everyone gets the end joke. And those that uh. don't get the end joke don't know the movie. It's too on the nose for me. It's so on the nose, it's punching me in the face. Is that on the nose? Um, so, yeah, that, you know, again. Anyway, um, it's revealed that these killers are actually students. So, we're setting up the fact that there's two killers. So, once again, everything looks like we are going to go into this movie for its entirety, knowing who the killers are, which seems very, 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 very strange. Very un screen so far. Only for that person to then be terror terrorized and murdered by the actual ghost face killer. So we like once again it's like a it's like a fake away. We knew it was coming, but I like the way they handled it. Surprisingly brutal opening. Like Samara Weaving gets stabbed like about a million times. Um and then this cunt gets stabbed about a million times. And it's really, really good. And like you said, and I think this is the first one in a while. There's actually a link to what happens at the start as to what happens at the end. Like yes. that, that, that death at the beginning actually links through where in previous movies, like the first movie, uh, Drew Barrymore's killed because she dated Stu or Billy or whichever one it was, and that's why she's chosen. Um, but I feel like in other movies, we just kind of dropped that. Someone dies, but it's because they live in Woodsboro. Yeah. Like, out with Cotton Weary, well, that kind of makes sense. Um, but we kind of lost a lot of that as the franchise moved on. So it made sense, from my point of view, of if we are revealing those killers, let's make them more an integral part of the story, which I did. So, that's my thoughts. That's my thoughts on that. Anything you would like to uh, throw on top of that, Baz? Uh, regarding the opening? Yeah, 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 the opening. Uh, not specifically about the opening, no, that, it was like you say, it was when they whipped the mask off very early on and I'm like, yeah. right, obviously you're flipping the script because that's never happened before and that was when I'm kind of going, are, are you trying too hard here mm. to to flip things, do you know what I mean? But the way it played out, I was very happy with it in the end. Yep. Right, let's. I'm going to swing it right to a negative, and I'm going to swing it to a negative because of something you specifically mentioned towards the end about body counts, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that should be dead in this movie. Yes. 
and that irritates the fuck out of me. Like, certain characters die after being stabbed twice. Yeah, yeah. other characters apparently can be eviscerated Butchered. and then just, yeah, just be alive at the end of the movie. Um, and we mentioned about the fact that, and it's a subversion of expectations, generally what's mentioned in the script kind of happens in the movie. In the fifth movie, they pretty much tell you who the killer is about 15 minutes into it, if you're paying attention. They say, you know, if, well, if we were writing it like a horror movie, this person and this person would be the killer, mm-hmm. and they were revealed at the end. Um, and this one, they purposely said all bets are off, and you know, legacy characters can slash will die. Mm-hmm. Um, ain't no legacy character died in this movie. No, not one. Not one. The core four, as they call themselves, all are alive at the end of this movie. And Gail Weathers, who should be dead. <laughs> like yeah. we should be mourning the death of Gail Weathers is likely alive at the end of that one. In fact, they, they see it. They come in and fucking yeah. see it at the end that she's alive. So no, no one of consequence value, which feels yeah. like consequence is a better word, actually dies in this movie. Which in itself gave me the same frustrated feeling I had when watching Screen Part Two, Screen Part Three, mm-hmm. and Screen Part Four. Yeah, I would fully back you on this. Um, so there, there's the guilt. Now, I had a feeling from the watching the trailers, yeah. I was convinced that Gail was going to die. Mm-hmm. They'd off Dewey in the last one, Gail will go. And just, just the way the, the, the little shots from her scene, the ghost face that were in the trailer, I thought, yeah, no, she's going to... And it was the same... When I was watching, I was like, right, she's dead here. Yeah. And it looks that way. And then the paramedics rush in. We've got a faint pulse. Right, okay. That was disappointing for me. But <laughs> I could have put that aside and got on with it. But there are... So the characters of Mindy and her brother. Yes. Both. Mindy gets attacked on a subway train. It was a cool scene. I've got but, issues with it, but I know what you're saying. It was a cool scene, but I have some big issues with it. Yeah, I, I did not expect for one second that she was going to get up from oh. that. Her brother, towards the end, is even worse. He essentially sacrifices himself to let the others escape. Yep. And we are giving anything away at this point, because we'll probably talk about it in a minute, but there's, so there's more than one ghost face. Two yep. of them have, have now appeared at the same point. They're holding the guy... And stabbing him repeatedly oh, God, yeah. in the chest and abdomen, right? And somehow, right, so, so he's dead, right? That's it. Chad's gone, <laughs> and of course he's just had a romantic interlude with wee Jenna Ortega. Who could blame yep. him for that? You know, and and this will be the crushing blow because they finally confess their feelings for each other, and he dies, essentially saving her. Yeah, and then randomly and it was like one of these awful things that was put in post-production he gets wheeled out with like a wee face mask on yeah no oh, blood he's still alive yeah, no blood transfusions no like like they like, ain't no even blue light. light in the guy <laughs> <laughs> uh, he must have at least one punctured lung surely to god do you know what i mean and he actually starts talking to them, and you're like, no. Yeah. And that when that was the one thing that I really disliked was them bringing yeah. him, not bringing him back, I, I, but not the, killing you, him. Yeah, is this the, like I'm wondering if this is the director's sense of humor though that these characters are like indestructible. Like this is good because that was the thing with Dewey, right? So Dewey got like attacked in the first movie, not. Heavily injured, yeah. Do he ended up sort of carrying all of his injuries, didn't he? Yeah, like all the way through the movies. So I, I'm wondering if that's what they're trying to do here is kind of break that out. It just doesn't like do we, do he never got stabbed in the front 15 times and yeah. then was all right, you know, he got hit in the back or something, stabbed in the back or whatever, uh, but it was never to this extent. And that to me is it's so bizarre to see on screen like it, it like almost kind of it's almost too comedic like for, mm-hmm. for what's 
for, for, for what's went on. Um, Hayden Pantieri, um, she is brutally stabbed. Oh, God, she's yes, so she is. Yeah. I'd actually she's forgotten about her, but you're right. Yeah, yeah she's fine Ooh. at the end of the movie. And I kind of felt like... what? What's the point of setting this in the big city if you're not really just going to mix it up? Like, genuinely mm. mix this... I, I, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, what scenes are actually bettered by being in New York as a location over Woodsboro and mm. I str- like out with the subway scene which like I say I've got I've got some issues with that I'll, I'll go, get on to in a second out with that you could have sat that you could have set this in Woodsboro the one for the previous movie it didn't add any value to this the same way ironically enough that putting Jason in Manhattan and Jason takes Manhattan adds zero value to the character yeah. of the story doesn't do anything I, ch- I understand the change of location let's take it somewhere else if the franchise hadn't done that in part three it would seem special but it did it in part three it took it to hollywood so um i i just i felt like that was it didn't add anything at all and it is a missed opportunity it could have added so much this is um general gripes i know you were like it's a scream movie and i'm like mm. right fine it's a scream movie but once again you chose the location as as filmmakers like the police are just never anywhere in this movie at new york has like yeah. one of the highest like you cannot fucking do anything in new york without being swarmed by police so like the, i think it's maybe the most monitored city on the planet like genuinely that many cctv cameras and all the rest like literally no one does any like anything that happens there's no police anywhere um there's a scene in this you talked about it earlier with the girl crawling between the two apartments great uh-huh. fucking scene fucking incredible scene however the boyfriend of sam danny who has his mobile phone who texts across to let them know phones and texts across to let them know there's a killer in there did he phone the police because if he phoned the police um, it took them an inordinate amount of time to get there at a location where, by the way, a cop's daughter lived, which you make you think it would. It just that sort of stuff just drives me up the. Like I can forgive Woodsboro because look at the police officers in Woodsboro; they're kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. bumbling backwards. I can forgive that. Mm, and that, and then the subway. I've mentioned it before. I've been in the subway. The lights don't go out like that. It's not a fucking, it's not the rave scene from Blade. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like every tunnel, like everything goes out and you're sitting pitch black. It's not how subway trains run. Um, I, I, like that irritates me because it's it's just not true to life. Um, once again, you're setting it in a place, in a city that people have been to many times or people live there and all the rest. And then you make it, you, you 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 put something in it's just clearly not something the way it would operate. I, I that just yeah, but is that me off. is that mechanism of the lights going out in the New York subway not used in a lot of films? <laughs> yes, but that doesn't make it right. That makes sense. Mm. I, I like. I don't like just because just because there's a technique used in a movie, specifically in the past. Actually, it was used a lot more. I don't know if it's used necessarily a lot nowadays, but like definitely in the eighties, if you were in a subway, I actually think the lights probably did go at the subway. Yeah, I mean, I, the New York subway was an absolute death trap for many many years. Yeah. Um, you know, when the Black Panthers ended up having to patrol it. To, not the Black Panthers, sorry, the the Guardian <laughs> Angels. Um, had to patrol yeah. it, you know, to try and keep yeah. people safe and all that. Um, yeah, it was a, a terribly dangerous way to get about. Yeah. Um, so I, can, I can kind of see that. To me, it just is a it's a mechanism to set up a kill, which felt like it could have been set up another way and not needed to do that. I don't know. Like, it's, it's like Ghostface is getting closer, and he's getting closer, and I, it's a, like I say, it's a cool visual. But it it just it it's like 
it just didn't it had made zero sense to me and like it really it really did and then and that's in the back half of the movie like i said in the back half of the movie as soon as they revealed Ghostface lair yeah right, that's the critical glasses went on and i was like all right here we go let's find out what we're doing here um in principle i like the idea of callbacks to the previous movies so the the killers in this one um, have basically went on the black market and purchased all the outfits, um, basically any memorabilia, yeah, everything, knives, everything. It's just readily available from black market cops. Um, but they bought everything, like even down to like the the fucking football jumper that the dude was wearing in the first movie. Yeah, there was a melted was phone. Like I'm a fire-damaged phone and, yeah. Just everything. So it's like a shrine to Ghostface, right? It's this big shrine to Ghostface. Um, and and yeah, there's some wee Korean guy <laughs> down in Chinatown with a big big pile of phones and a blowtorch lap. <laughs> Just fucking melting these sons of bitches and then selling them on the dark web. <laughs> authentic um <laughs> but as um so like as soon as it's like that i like the idea of someone being obsessed with ghostface i think having the the built the, the whole floor of like an a, abandoned cinema converted into this in new york with new york real estate prices by the way yeah um you know it's, it's this stuff is that like it's when you put things in that raise a question, I will ask the question. See, in the previous movies, I never wondered where Ghostface lived. Um, I don't need to know where Ghostface <laughs> lived because it wasn't... As soon as you do it, though, it needs to... The, the reveal as to what is going on here is fucking terrible, right? I, I'm, I'm like, the killers in this one, and we'll get this out of the way, it is revealed, and I had, I had two in my head that I thought were the killers. I thought Ethan Landry, who is a uh, Chad's roommate, mm-hmm. who is like they keep making reference to him being the obvious killer. And on the subway, they set it up so he is not the killer in a very scream one sort of Billy's a killer. Oh, it couldn't have been Billy's been at the police station. Because he night. was there when this happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they totally sit there and I was like that, right? I've, well, listen, I've played this fucking game before. I know this tune, right? So I thought it was him. And I thought it was Detective Bailey, played by Dermot Mulroney, who it definitely is, who apparently wasn't that overcome with remorse after losing his daughter, who is the roommate of um, Sam and Tara. Uh, she gets butchered early on in the movie. So I thought those two, and I I couldn't quite work out what the relationship might be, but then I was like, this is... I had it in the back of my head, this is a screen to sort of thing right so in scream 2 it's the parent of like i'm like one of the murdered um mm-hmm. killers from the first movie so it's like an older killer so it's like an adult right and it's the younger budding soci- like sociopath um so i had it like detective bailey was most likely the killer the reveal of the third killer that's right three killers in this movie uh the real reveal of the third killer is it's um quinn the roommate of yeah. Sam and Tara, who was fake killed, um, and she's actually the she's the daughter of Detective Bailey, but so is Ethan, who is the son of Detective Bailey. And wait for it, they are the siblings, and he's a parent of the killer from Part Five, the, the Ricky. Um, Ricky. So that they're, they're all one big family. Um, this is fucking stupid, Baz. It's fucking stupid. I'd like it's 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 so stupid that like I wanted to throw something at the screen. Um because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any any sense at all. In the space of what, not even a year, they've bought all the all this fucking all the screen paraphernalia, bought a fucking cinema. Um like both of them have manage to become the roommates of the exact people that they want to be the roommates of and then start this Machiavellian plan. Now, I know what you're thinking, Baz. I know what you're going to say. It's a Scream movie and it's part six. No, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, I I hate this. I fucking hate this. I think it's just... the, The more they talk about why they're doing it, the less sense it makes. Like, the death of this kid 
turned the whole family insane. I'd, I and I it would it would annoy me less if Kevin Williamson hadn't basically done the exact same reveal in a movie that he has already released this year, which he wrote uh, called Sick, which is a slasher movie, which has almost identically the same reveal at the end, uh, which was fucking stupid then as well. Um, so yeah, I hate I hated the reveal in this. Um, See, and, I would just see just on some of the points you raised there. Yeah, like retort. So, man. come at me. Right, so I'm not saying this is 100 percent right, but I'm fairly sure this is what I had picked up from it. So the collection was actually put together by Ricky. Mostly. Where did he get the money? Where did he get the money? Right, okay, right. But I'm just cop. saying. He's a right, cop. I don't think they bought the cinema. It was a derelict cinema. It's kitted out with saw like equipment and fucking keycard scanners. Yeah, I, I know, but I'm just saying they didn't buy a cinema. I think and there was a oh, there was a third thing I was going to throw back here. But anyway, I clocked about fifteen minutes into the film the character of Quinn, the the, the girl roommate. She says, "So you, about, oh, you went the other way then?" Yeah, I. She says, talks about her brother being dead. And she laughed yes. because we know that her dad's the cop. Her dad is, we know that all the way through the movie. Yeah. Um, and she's like, yeah, he, he's just crazy ever since my brother died. And the minute she said that, I was like, all right. Now, I hadn't put it that the brother was Ricky. I hadn't made that right. connection. But I just immediately went, she's one of the killers because she's got a dead brother. Yeah. And this dead brother is going to come into this somewhere down the line. Oh, right, thing. so you went, you, like, between uh, the I, two of us, we picked all three. Yeah, pretty much, we'd got it all. Um, yeah, so, no, I, I, I'm going to say what you were going to say, I'm just going to say it's a, it's a slasher film, and, you know, they're just expanding <laughs> the envelope, if you like. That's, that's the frustrating thing, is I think there are scream endings that are better written. Yeah, and, mm. and th- th- mm. but the whole point of the scream ethos as a franchise is to be knowingly poking fun at the genre, but doing it in a clever way. And this yeah. isn't clever. It isn't clever at all. Actually, it felt like a really bad Scooby Doo ending. Like and then right. when, like I see when they started explaining it more and more as to and it's me the brother. <laughs> <laughs> and me, the cop fisherman from down the like, it just is. Mm-hmm. It was too. It was too. And they tried the the ending felt really messy because they try and fake set up, and they've tried it throughout the movie that Hayden uh, Kirby uh, as a character yeah. is the killer, which doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Um, and then they do, they try one last gasp at it, and I don't know who that's for. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe for the characters, but not for the audience. But the, the these characters are supposed to be the fucking you know the the sleuthiest sleuth characters ever that they wouldn't fall for that. So I, I, I like I say, it just irritated me. Um, on the flip side of that, if they're smart, if they're smart and they know what they're doing, and I kind of hope they are, this movie in retrospect could be a better movie. If in the next movie Sam becomes a killer, mm-hmm. because all the stuff she had to go through in this movie specifically, like full on with the death and all the rest, and the the Billy Loomis character, like you know, like release the <laughs> release the fury, um, all that stuff, like that breaking through because of what she had to do specifically in this movie and her then finding she has a taste for it and doing it in, in more movies. Yeah. That would make a lot of that feel more palatable for me overall. I don't know if they'll have the balls to do that. With no, they'll them. never do it. Never do it. I really the, don't. This is, well, this is, they struggled with this, with the, the original plan for Scream 4 was that so, uh, Sydney. Emma Roberts, that Emma Roberts was supposed to kill Sydney. Uh, and then we spoke about this before she was supposed to be the sole survivor like her aunt was and then she would essentially become famous but 
she would be a serial killer. Yeah. And, and that ended up, yeah, ended up changing that, all like, that. And then that became the following. The, the TV show, Kevin Williamson went on and wrote that as a kind of a cult of serial killers. This was going to be the, the plan. And they, they, they shat it on that one. They will. They'll shit it on the next one. Mm. There is going to be another Scream movie. Yeah. I just, I just, it felt, it felt so Scooby-Doo at the end with just like an explanation and an explanation on the explanation and an explanation on the explanation on the explanation yeah, and the I mean, explanation. I, I don't I, ever know if any of the previous ones were as egregious on that or the, the dialogue was just better written that it didn't feel like they were constantly over-explaining what it is they were doing and why they were yeah. doing it. See, I, I don't think I was as bothered by it because I yeah. did... I kind of get that impression at the end of most Scream films. Now, mm. I've maybe not analysed them as much as you have, and maybe you're right, maybe they did go a bit over the top in this. I, I couldn't say. I would need to go yeah. back and sit and watch them all again. I, I think, for me, I'd actually... So I'd ringed off... The, I, I'm going to bring it back to these failed kills. So yes. you had... Yes. Um, <laughs> we had Courtney Cox. We had... Yep. Characters are Mindy and Chad, and as you, I had forgotten about the Hayden Panettiere one, so she, you know, so you did <laughs> four of them. If you had killed two of them, yep. I would have been just delighted with this movie. I, I think, you know, I, it was just... So that was... Even Hayden Panettiere came in... I mean, she only came back in. I'm assuming she get brought in when fucking Neve Campbell said she wasn't coming. Do you know what I mean? I, I can't remember the exact timeline on it, but I do remember around the time of those discussions, her name was mentioned. Uh, so yeah, yeah. it wouldn't surprise me. So, but if, if you killed off two of the four, yep. like they, should all, they should have all died from their wounds, to be quite frank. Mm-hmm. But even if you'd just done, particularly Chad, I, I, I cannot accept that he didn't <laughs> die of his wounds. But if you just killed off the two of them, that would have satisfied me. Big stones, yep. yep. Well done. Get rid of a couple of the, the big names. But that's what I'm saying. Um, like, if you look at characters from previous screen movies that are in this movie, Gail Weathers, Sam Carpenter, Tara Carpenter, Mindy Martin, Chad Martin, um, and Kirby. Kirby Reed, none of them die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I'm not like actively wanting characters to be killed off, but but why? I I don't like what well, is it? What is it that Chad and Mindy actually bring to this franchise yeah. that is not replaceable in the next movie? Oh, exactly, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you've already kind of set a bar for killing Dewey in the last one. Yes, and kind of failing to follow that up a bit. I'm not saying you have to kill one in every movie now, do you know what? It doesn't have to be that. <laughs> they killed but off characters I, I, that we... I personally think if they'd get rid of Courtney Cox, if they'd get rid of... Um, what's Courtney's character's name again? Gail Weathers. Gail Weathers. If they'd got rid of Gail, that to me would have been the final passing of the torch. That would have... Yeah. And it would have opened it up so that this is Scream 2.0. All the old stuff's gone now. Yeah, and it's the new ones, and we're going to carry it on. I just Courtney feel Cox, that would have worked better, yeah. you know. If they do another movie, I can't imagine Courtney Cox isn't back. No, yeah, you know I mean that she has like an appearance, even if it's a small role. I can't imagine she's not. And if Neve Campbell does come back for for like, let's say they sort that out, she works her way back into the franchise. I just kind of feel like this late in the game. That shouldn't be a thing. Like, if you're going to yeah. pass... Like, I understand the half-passing of the torch in the in the part five. We're testing the waters. That movie did really, really well. Fully passed the torch over in part six. I'm with yeah. you on this one. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you've... Like, and to me, it's, it's such an egregious misstep that I, I just... I can't... I can't quite fathom... Like, every character that dies here is a brand new face with... Like, next to no... Like background or like, like yeah. Like, I mean the the one the, the fall from the 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 buildings kill that which was excellent. Yes. I mean that character is Mindy's girlfriend. 
Yes. Um, that, that's all she has brought in as, and she has... There's zero fucking character development other than she's gay because she's going out with Mindy. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That, that's really it. Um, she she has minimal kind of dialogue. Um, she's what, just what did you think of the uh, tannin fodder? What did you think of the red herring slash uh, sultry man next door? Uh, Danny Danny Brackett, uh, who is Sam's mysterious boyfriend. Um, I, I, I didn't I, fall for <laughs> that in any way, shape, yeah. or form because yeah, the first main scene that he has is when he sees. Um, ghost face in the other apartment now don't, yeah. well, like you say we've all done this dance before mm-hmm. but he is freaking out and trying to get in contact to warn them yeah. so why would he be doing that yeah, like, Do who's, I mean? whose benefit would that be for like if they're not looking why would you act that way yeah um, yeah I mean, yeah like I, so, I just seem it never strange. once entered my head that it had anything to do with him yeah. Um, also, and, and they did. They kept. They kept trying to pick away at it a wee bit. Yeah, do you know like, what I mean? Like, well, look, he's here. It's Danny. Uh, yeah. Here's Danny. Um, the other thing is, goes like, even me. Don't trust anybody. Don't even trust me. Yeah. She can trust you, Danny. We all know she can trust you. It's fine, mate. Honestly, <laughs> it's like, maybe, maybe I know. Up, I know huh? you're trying. I know you're trying to be yeah. noble here, Danny. But come on. Um, Sorry. But he's a he's a non character though. Yes, very you know much mean? so. Even and I didn't the find end. them even relatable as a couple. No, you know I mean? it's an awful, awful pair. Um, so it's so, so, so strange. Um, so yeah, I, there's a bit of that. Yeah, like it's, I think, like it's almost exclusively from the point of view of, um, oh, I found out there's a there's a layer. At that point, my brain just went into, all oh, right, um, I need to Dan, start paying attention here. Let's pay attention here. And as soon as I did, it, it unraveled pretty quick for me. And then that became more of frustration for me. I don't like being frustrated by movies, um, especially movies that aren't like... I enjoy being frustrated by movies that are designed to be frustrating, um, mm-hmm. not movies that are relatively superficial. Um like I shouldn't. I just kept, kept, I kept irritating me, and then by the time I got to the end of it, with the like I say, the many explanations of the the killers, the the like what once again, and I know, I know, I know, it's a screen movie and it's part six. They're just walking out of here. They walk out at the end. There's a bloodbath and a dead cop. A dead cop in that building there. A dead yeah. cop and these two these two children have been murdered in that building and the NYPD are practically patting the back of uh, Sam Carpenter, who was their lead fucking suspect and and all the other ones. That's and a everyone's, fair point, everyone's, everyone's, everyone's fine. <laughs> everyone's fucking fine with it. Once again, in Woodsboro, I can let that off, Baz, because I can be like, mm. well, they know Sydney or they know whatever. In New York, what we're doing here, what yeah. we're doing here, except specifically doing something that will boil Duncan's brain for six hours after he watched the movie. Two of these kids are African American, and the other two are Latino. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're going down for the long stretch. Yeah, you know there's, three, I mean? there's three, three dead white kids. Uh, so three, uh, two dead white kids and a white cop in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, man. <laughs> and it's, it's not just that though it's the manner in which the deaths happen as well she shoots a cop and then no in fact she, she doesn't she doesn't shoot the cop that's a lie she shoots a cop's son no she shoots a cop's daughter she eviscerates a cop she stabs a cop about 40 times and then slits his fucking neck and she walks out of that. Yeah, because she stops and leaves him alive. Yeah. And then, yeah. no, you're right, fuck it, he's dead and kills him. Aye. Which is essentially murder at that point. Aye, it's murder at that point. Um, and also, you can't claim self-defence, yet the police officers are, there's no book on Dano here. Um, it's like, <laughs> it, you know what I mean? She, fucking awarded the keys to the city it ju- that sort of stuff just drives me up the wall man it drives me up the wall and it's because of the context of where it's set as opposed to if it was set anywhere else 
soon as you ground, as soon as you ground it, Woodsboro doesn't exist. Yeah. As soon as you ground it, New York City, you're playing by New York City rules, and then you are fucking breaking those rules. Very much like Bean broke Batman's back. You know what I mean, just like boom like that, and then fucking in a pit. Um, boom. Comic book reference drop like I, a I, fucking bomb. Tried it. I don't know if it landed. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Oh, you'd be proud of me, Baz. This is for the video peeps out there. Proud of me here because I. Uh... Oh, Dim Patrol! Gonna get a shot. Gonna get a shot. Uh, me nice. and the wife are gonna give it a watch. Um, nice. Just off uh, off the many things you've mentioned over the last what about two years about this thing, uh, I'm gonna watch it. So I, I might even I might even be able to throw another comic book reference. And somewhere down the road. Um, I, I mean, that's really that's the frustration. The back half frustrated me, and as a result, I kind of lowered my grade. Whereas in Scream Five, and I know there are people out there that like Scream Five as just a basic Scream movie. To me, it's harder to hide the mistakes in a basic movie than it is in a flashy big movie. You can hide a lot of stuff, and then as a result, the stuff that does float out is obviously like bad or poorly written or whatever become the things that you're like oh, that shouldn't happen here and it's not that these guys clearly don't have a love for the scream franchise they clearly do and they're good directors and the cast seem to be engaged in it and i do want to see another movie with sam carpenter and tara yeah, yeah. carpenter yeah. I, I do i want to see them continue on and i do want to see ghostface again this to me is a blip um and and the the recent successful run that they've had in parts four uh, through part five, this one drops a little bit for me, for sure. See, Didn't hear. see so. just before we finish, yes. can I ask a question? Go for it. Do you think this film benefited from Neve Campbell's character not being in it? So this is the big thing that's going on just now um, online. There's a huge conversation point about that one fans are happy well, some fans are happy she wasn't in the movie because they're kind of tired of the character um and to the movie turned out good without her in their opinion you know what i mean so it's not as if she's an integral core um i like neve campbell i don't think she's a fucking great actress by any stretch of the imagination but i like her as sydney prescott mm -hmm. um in a horror franchise you can have a final girl disappear for a while. You can do. You can do a Jamie yeah, Lucas. They can come back later. Yeah, yeah. Aye. So she's not in this one. We've moved the setting. Kind of make. If I was Neve Campbell's character, would I want to travel to New York to try and get him with? I can like that. To me, it was kind of covered a little bit by that. Yeah. I don't think the movie's better for it for her not being in it. I don't think it's any worse for her not being in it either. To me, it's a. I'm I'm kind of with her. Pay the woman the money, like she's yeah. she's the face. She is the final girl. She she's is the she is the face of Scream. There's there's no yeah. getting by that. I, I think it was just it was when you mentioned that you'd like to see another film with Sam and yes. Tara in it. Yeah, and it's quite interesting with the two of them because they are the final girl. Yes, you know they the, they are very much uh, one unit, even though that there's two of them. Which yeah, I like, that's, and it works yeah, well. That's Mindy, and, Mindy and Chad as well are essentially mm -hmm. one character split in half as yeah. well. Which works. It, it it works. So, and I just, I just feel they kind of got by it in the last movie, but to to have the two of them and Sydney and further films yeah. going forward, I just think would be too much. It's yeah. kind of why yeah. I wanted them to kill off Gail. Yeah, Sydney. Or, or Neve Campbell rather decided she wasn't going to be in this movie for whatever reason, right? Or, uh, well, it clearly was right if it was coming down to money. Um, but she maybe shot herself in the foot because, to be quite honest, I think if they'd shoehorned her character in there somewhere, it would just have been too friggin' much for me. There's a there is a reference. Uh, which I listen to like for my sins, and I don't know why I do it. It's because I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I stopped listening to horror podcasts. So I listen to almost exclusively true crime podcasts, but I also occasionally don't ask me why listen to podcasts on uh, wrestling events that happened when I was a kid. 
So like <laughs> WrestleMania three, all the rest, and the people that were involved with it. And there's a phrase that's bandied around a lot, which is very applicable to horror. It's like super applicable to horror franchises, which is how can I know? Um, no, how can I miss you if you won't go? Right? How can I miss right. you as a character? Because you're overused, you become part of the furniture. When you're not there, I miss you, and then you come back. So when you come back, it's like what? It's an event it becomes an event mm. piece in cinema. Jamie Lee Curtis very cleverly did that when she washed her hands of Halloween for the best part of like twenty years, and then when she came back in H two O, people were like, "Fucking Jamie Lee Curtis is back!" You know what I mean? And mm. it, be- it became a she's back in the franchise. And Eve Campbell could certainly do that. I I don't think. To me, I think if she ever did come back, they would have to kill her character off, and I think yeah, like one last hurrah all... type thing. Yeah, which once again is the the most cliche horror trope. But I also think that actually she'd be benefited by not coming back, and they're probably giving her the best out. Like Gail saying to I think it's Kirby or something or I think it's no it's actually uh, it's Tara she says um Sydney's not coming um you know she's gonna have a happy ending or whatever it is. I like that. I don't need to see mm. her on camera. I don't need to see her walking her kids on the beach. Um but she's not in, she's not in the franchise anymore. She's she's cut ties. She's not doing it anymore. That's her character's happy ending. Fine with that. Yeah. If they change uh, but I think they, they, mentioned, they mentioned her kids, I think, at one point as well. Yes. Which again makes perfect sense. Because yes, you wouldn't. If, if by that point you had your own kids, the last thing you would do is go anywhere near it. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You'd be living in a exactly. fucking cabin in the woods. Yeah, which she did in part three. Um, yeah, that's true. So, nah. um, so like, I, like, to me, I, like, it doesn't, the movie doesn't suffer for it. I'm not celebrating that she's not in it. I think some people online are taking great glee in the fact that the movie succeeded without her. It was never built on her. Mm-hmm. You could have removed her at any time and the franchise would have continued on. Because in horror franchises, no one's really sacred. Um, which is why I am even more baffled now that I read that article about that upcoming Scream movie where Tobin Bell is coming back as Jigsaw for flashbacks. I'm oh, like, why? So, a Saw movie? Sorry, you said a Scream movie there. Do you mean a so, Saw sorry, movie? I meant so, Saw. Yeah, Tobin Bell's coming back to play Jigsaw in flashbacks. Tobin Bell is now, what, fucking 20 years older than he was? And he's an old guy. Um, in the first like 20 one. years older than he was when he did Saw. Yeah. <laughs> what the fucking... And the, 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 like the... The flashbacks must be set before that. I just it's fucking stupid. Um, I like no like no franchise is predicated on one person. It's predicated on the killer. That's why franchise mm. horror works. Yeah. And Scream has been probably the most savvy, smartest franchise of all because they have openly and you touched it right on the start, Baz. Kill him every time. Be, yeah, kill him every time, and you don't have to worry about how he's resurrected. Someone else just picks up the mantle and carries on. Yeah, genius. Yeah. It's genius. It's ge- it's oh, it really is. Because as you say, it avoids all the ridiculous shit that plagues all the resurrection. So stuff all that- of the other ones. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah, we don't ever have to worry about it. So yeah, in answer to your question, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, if she never comes back, she never comes back. If she comes back, I'd like to see her on screen. I like the character, but yeah. it's not as if I walked out of the cinema going, "Well, they fucked it." They fucked it because yeah. she wasn't in it. If she'd been in yeah. this movie, I would have still had exactly the same issues I had with this movie. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't yeah, I, I personally like. feel if if she had been in it, I think I might have it have been an, a, an additional gripe for me. I think. Well, because she would have survived. Would have just felt, <laughs> yeah, and I just feel it would have been too cluttered. Um, and yeah. and like I say, I, I really like the passing of the torch element. Yeah. I don't, and that's why I, I just feel if they killed fucking Gail, I'd have been well, she's the, She would have been the last you know I mean? one to... I also hate the fact that they flip-flop on her as a character every fucking movie. Yeah. Oh, she's like, a by bitch. The end oh, of it, you've written another yeah. book, you cow. Yeah. You at at the I mean? end of every movie, she's a re- she's she's went through redemption. 
and yeah. she's accepted and she's kind of like the quasi hero of the movie and then the next movie she's a bitch again and yeah. I'm like how many times are we going to do this and why does anyone continue to speak to her you mean yeah, it's like an I, I got that so we got the again a homage to the, the early movies <laughs> she gets a punch in the jaw off a wee Tara yeah. uh, and then but then you get the reveal that she's now written a book essentially about what happened yeah. in, in movie 5 yeah and yeah, it's like you say, it's like you you wouldn't give her the goddamn time of day after that. Like it's how many also, times do you need to fuck yeah. like murder <laughs> victims over? You know what I mean? I'd, let me put it this way. the make a point of stressing that the previous events from part five happened a year ago. Gail Weathers managed to get over Dewey in a year, write a best-selling book about Scream 6. Um get back on the trail as being a hard-hitting reporter on the front line because she wasn't member she was retired she was an author and retired in the fifth movie uh, and no that was in the fourth movie she was back to being a reporter in the fifth movie um but yeah like she's back out there she's a mover and a shaker she writes a book and all this happens within a year yeah and you're just like come on what we're we doing oh, here nah. um so yeah like i say messy messy back half didn't really do it for me didn't hate it um, it won't be on my end of year list. But then Screen 5 wasn't on my end of year list. No. Um, but I enjoyed that one a lot more than I enjoyed this. And I am genuinely... If someone said to me, Screen 7, March 2024, I'm there. Like, oh, they've got, they've got, my, they've got my money, man. They've got they've got my money, day one. So. I am... Um... I actually said to you outside the cinema and I'm coming on the show with this because you were aggressively unimpressed by it when you came out although how much that was just to wind me up I don't know part but of it, I, I, part I, of I decided it. I wanted to come on now in fairness we've talked about all the screen movies I wanted to come on yeah um, to kind of give the viewers maybe a more upbeat opinion of it I don't think we're actually that far apart to be I don't honest think so either. I don't think um, so and I think our scores reflected that and I'm yeah. quite glad of that and yeah as you say as soon as they announce Scream 7, I'm there. Do you know? Oh, I mean? we're going, man. I, I can't fucking wait. The interesting last detail I mentioned is that we, me, so I've seen every Scream movie in the cinema and that's like, that's a, a that's a tradition. I, I want to keep going yeah. uh, as we move forward. And um, we went, so this is the first time I'd seen a Scream movie with you and Dave was Scream 5 last year. Uh-huh. Um, and Dave did not like Scream 5 but thoroughly enjoyed Scream 6. So... Yeah, and I find that odd. Cause... I find that, like, so odd. It's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> so, there you go. So, like like I say, I, I, I think it's... It's interesting because I... Once again, it makes me wonder if maybe that's the idea. Is maybe it's being pitched in such a way where it will score higher with people that just aren't necessarily fully invested in the Scream franchise. Now queer as folk, big man. Now queer as folk. <laughs> so there we go. That was a review of Scream 6. Um, it is out. It's available. You can go and check it out. I dare say we won't have long to wait for it to reach uh, VOD streaming and all the other all the other jazz out there. Just a reminder, I gave it a 3 out of 5. Baz gave it a 3.5. We're going to close out the show and we're going to do it right now. Thank you very much for checking out this episode of Bazzy's Backdoor Cinema a subset of podcasts under the stairs. Uh, Rather than give you all the blurb and jargon, I'm just going to say thank you very much for all the support. It feels great to be back doing this with the Baz. We have our next episode planned. We're going to be doing Fred West um, and his stint in Glasgow, a sky dog. Fred West, Fred West, the Glasgow girls. There we go. Sky Um, documentary. back into the the world of true crime um it was technically planned to happen before this but then we saw scream and we wanted to talk about it and we yeah. control the show uh so <laughs> do whatever the fuck uh, we want exactly um, um, i'd also i'd like to make one more announcement just before we go which oh, you fuck. don't even know oh shit but we will be doing evil dead rise oh. as baz's backdoor cinema Continue because the franchise on. I've done them all before and we're going to talk about it. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see it, man. 
it looks it looks the the trailers have me in like totally it looks like a it looks like a giant ball of gory fun and i kind of want that i kind of want that it'll be good for it'll be good for us both i think um baz final say always to yourself um what would you like to say to the listeners before we depart I'd just like to thank everybody for tuning in and checking this uh, review out. Um, just fucking go and see Scream 6, man. You might like it, you might not. Who cares? Go and see it. You'll have a good time. Um, I hope you're enjoying Baz's Backdoor Cinema. As I say, we will be back to do our Fred West documentary. I will be back to talk about the Evil Dead or the new Evil Dead movie with Duncan. And we'll mm-hmm. be, I'll be popping back here, there and everywhere. So don't you worry about that. Thanks again for tuning in, folks, and I will uh, speak to you all very soon. Excellent. Thank you very much, Baz. And yeah, we can also announce that there will be an upcoming episode of Jaws is Shite and Other Regrettable Outbursts, the booze-based banter entertainment podcast featuring myself, the Baz, and Scott and Liam from Scott and Liam vs. Evil. It's going to be in its first video podcast format which is just a recipe for disaster. Um, so yeah, cringy face. Um, but yeah, that'll be dropping within the next week and a bit. So keep your eyes peeled for that as well. We're recording it on Good Friday. Will it be a Good Friday? We'll find out. Um, but until then, whatever you are, what the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off. <laughs>